In this video, I'm going to be going over moment of inertia, showing you the equation for it. And we're also going to do an example. So first of all, what is a moment of inertia? Well, it's an object's resistance to a change in rotational motion. I think this is a key piece of information right here that is really nice to know. Okay, so this is what we use here. Now, what letter do we use for it? Well, it's actually I. We use the letter I. So capital I right here. And we're going to say I equals, this is from your formula booklet, it's del, uh, sigma, and then we have m r squared. Now, I prefer to put a parentheses here. I think it's more clear. So I think that's maybe a little bit better to do it that way. And I'm going to uh, put a big square around it because this is a really important equation. So first of all, what is the moment of inertia? Well, I kind of put this down here. It's the rotational equivalent of mass, kind of. I mean, it's not exactly equal to mass because there's mass there, but it is what we're going to need. So what is this? Well, first of all, uh, we're going to define this moment of inertia um, by this equation right here. So sigma, which is remember, means sum. It means you add up all the terms and you add up all the m times r squared. What this is telling you is where the mass is distributed. So this is going to be a key piece here. So moment of inertia, for example, um, well, what's the units going to be? If you look at this right here, m mass is in kilograms and r is in meters, uh, meters, sorry. So that means must be kilogram meters squared. So that's going to be the units of moment of inertia, kilogram meters squared. That's going to be key here. And like I said, as it depends on how the mass is distributed. Now, in real life physics, so to speak, it gets very complicated because it all depends on the symmetry and the shape that you're looking at. But we're going to keep things fairly simple in our physics class here, which is nice. So you'll often be given an equation for it. And if you're not, uh, you'll be given like, oh, the moment of inertia of this thing's rotating this way is going to be a blah, blah, blah. They're going to tell you what it is. But if they don't tell you, then you could always calculate it using this. All right, so let's look at a, uh, a little bit deeper here. I actually put this little meme here, the other person, wait, give me a moment. And this person's like, what? <laughs> That's because here, <laughs> like this, they've got different moments of inertia. In fact, we're gonna use this. If we have a solid sphere, okay, so this is with the radius r, and it's rotating about this, this axis here. So it's, it's almost like I've skewered it, you know, uh, with this, you know, red dot right here, a red line, and then it sort of spins or rotates around that axis. Same thing with this solid cylinder. It's basically rolling down a hill. What would the moment of inertia be here? Now, you don't have to memorize it. You'll be given this if you need it. So that's why I said pro tip, you'll be given I if needed. So for example, here, let's look it up. Look, they actually have it right here. It's going to be, let's see, solid sphere. I put it here because I thought it was funny where you can actually use it. Solid sphere is actually I equals two fifths MR squared. So believe it or not, hey, learning by memes, here we go. So two fifths MR squared, for example. Whereas a solid cylinder, well, that's gonna be different. And again, you don't have to memorize these. You'll be given these if you need them. So a solid cylinder rotating around this axis right here, it's going to be one half m r squared. So there we go. And so on and so on. So they could give you whatever shape they wanted, and you'll just be told what the moment of inertia is. Now, if you're not told, then you do have to use that equation, you know, i equals sigma, which means add up all the, and then m r squared. So let me just show you a little bit how we could open this up. So what do we mean by this? Well, we could say then an i would be, what does this mean? It means, well, let's say we have one mass that's located at a certain distance out. So for example, we could say m1 times r1 squared. And then because it's sigma, we add up the next term, which is going to be, for example, m2 times r2 squared plus m3 times r3 squared. And do you see how it goes? Plus dot, dot, dot. You go until well, you go until you have all the information dealt with. So that's how actually I think it's a good way to solve this, or at least to do this. Okay, so that's what you do if you're not given the actual moment of inertia. However, I think you'll be given it most of the time. So that's why we're going to use this like this. So let's do a practical example then. Um, and this is not one that requires so much calculation. It's just one that requires thinking more. So we have two spheres and they have the same radius that are on an incline. Okay, so can you imagine that we've got some sort of hill? So, so now here we go, some sort of hill like this. And I've got two spheres here like this. Okay, and these spheres are here, which, you know, they go like this and like this. Each sphere is going to basically, you know, roll down the hill. 
So the question is, then, okay, sphere one is a solid sphere, so it has a moment of inertia, two-fifths mr squared, but sphere two is a hollow sphere. It turns out it's different. It's two-thirds. So the question is, which one will, will reach the bottom first and why? Now, I think the trick to figuring this out is thinking about the moment of inertia, like which one of these is actually bigger. So this one here, for example, sphere one. Okay, well, we have I1 is two-fifths mr squared, of course, and we have I2, which is just two-thirds. Now, which number is bigger? So which number of these are here is bigger? Two-thirds is around 0.66 or so. For example, this here is about 0.4. So which number is bigger? This is the largest one, right? So here I could say that this I2, because it's a larger number, because this moment of inertia is larger, it will resist the motion more. Because remember, moment of inertia is a resistance to change in rotational motion. So if it has a larger I value, that means it must resist the motion more. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means it has less translational uh, kinetic energy left over. Now, of course, we can write the opposite for sphere one, because I1, which is the solid sphere, because it has a smaller I, a smaller moment of inertia, remember, it will resist the motion less, so that means it has more translational kinetic energy left over. Now, what does that mean for us? So the solid sphere will reach the bottom first. And why? Again, it's because it has the smallest moment of inertia, so that means it resists the motion less. Now, this can be explained, actually, with um, this is an equation that we're going to see a little bit later on, that the kinetic energy of rotation is given by half I, which is the moment of inertia, remember, omega squared, which is kind of like saying the kinetic energy in linear function is uh, half mv squared. So if you think about a total energy, of this object that's moving, so it's rotating and it's you know actually translating this translational kinetic energy here. Well, then you can consider that hey, if the total energy has got to be conserved, that means that if let's say um, I right here is the largest, then what does that mean? If this is the largest, well, that means that E k rotation is the largest, and if that goes up, this is the largest. That means this E k then must be the smallest. Just by contrast, of course, if I is the smallest, that means this is the smallest, that means this is the largest. So what happens then is this. This is sort of the explanation I think I could give, at least with, with this, would be that, hey, because the solid sphere here, sphere number one, because it has the smallest I, well, that means it has the smallest rotational kinetic energy. That means it'll have the largest uh, translational kinetic energy. So that tells you not only will it reach the bottom first, it'll actually be going faster. So I hope this example helps to have it make some sense here. here. But um, what we've done, of course, in this video, we've gone over moment of inertia, the equation for it, um, a few examples of some objects, and of course, a little helpful tip right here for what to do if you're not given the moment of inertia. And there we go.